Hey everyone, I'm Mambo. So you already know how to start up your F16C, and if you don't, make sure to go watch my video on that. But if you do, you might be asking yourself, well, what do I do now? I'll tell you what you can do now. Drop some bombs. Alright, so now that we have a fully started up and fully aligned F16, let's start loading some weapons on it. To do so, you're gonna need to press the backslash key, which is right above the enter key on your keyboard. Hi everyone, post-production Mambo here. It was brought to me that not every keyboard layout around the world has the comms menu bound to backslash. So let's see how we can find what it's bound to. Inside of DCS, press escape, then adjust controls. Go to the dropdown, select search, and type in communications menu. You can see that for me, it's already bound to backslash, as I was saying. If you want to change it or it's not bound to anything, double click on the box corresponding to the device you want to use, press the button you want to use, OK, and then OK again. And that is it for post production Mambo. Hope you enjoyed my appearance here. See you next time. Once you've pressed it, you'll see the communications menu on the top right corner of your screen. From there, select Ground Crew and then Rearm and Refuel. That will bring up the menu which has everything related to loadout and fuel in it. And I'll set my fuel to 100%. Now we can start loading some weapons. Today, we're all about unguided bombs, specifically low drag unguided bombs. Those can be carried on stations 3, 4, 6 and 7. So we're going to take the unguided low drag 500 pound Mark 82 bomb putting three of it on each station, using a triple rack. When selecting it, make sure you're taking the LD version and not HD. LD being low drag and HD being high drag. We'll cover high drag bombs in a future Weapons Masterclass video. Lastly, let's put a fuel tank of 300 gallons on station 5. Another low drag unguided bomb available to us on the F-16 is the massive 2000 pound Mark 84 bomb. The difference between the two is the weight of the warhead. Bigger warhead equals bigger boom. Also notice that you can only carry one Mark 84 per station, compared to the max of three Mark 82s per station. Once all that is done, press the OK button and wait for the ground crew to tell you that it's been completed. Request refueling. Request Copy. rearming. Refueling complete. Rearming complete. Now that I have my loadout mounted on the jet, I'll turn on the nose wheel steering, turn off the parking brake, which is now off, and start taxiing. Flight attendants, prepare for takeoff, please. Now that we're in the air, I want to talk about what this series is going to be. This is the first video of my F-16 Weapons Masterclass series. This series of videos will be all about learning the DCS F-16's weapons, focusing on how and when to use them. If you enjoy it, be sure to drop a like and subscribe for the next video in this series. There are some really cool weapons ahead. Now, speaking of when to use these weapons, the most common uses for low drag unguided bombs are 1. If you're in a mission that's set in a time period before guided munitions were widely available, or 2 to drop multiple bombs in a straight line using the ripple function, although that's mostly used with high drag unguided bombs, so I'll keep that function for the video covering those bombs. I really like showing new players the bombs we're taking today first, as they provide a very solid foundation for when you learn and use other weapons. So let's start talking about how to drop these bombs. The first thing you need to do, and this applies to any weapon, is set your master switch to arm. Next. Select Air to Ground Mode. This will put the SMS page, Stores Management System, on your right MFD screen. 
In this page, you'll be able to change many parameters of your weapons and how they will be released from the jet. At the top, it will show you your currently selected master mode, indicated here by the A to G, air to ground. Next to it, we have our current sub mode. Right now, we're in CCIP, constantly computed impact point, and we can switch, if we want, to CCRP, constantly computed release point. Pressing on the sub mode button will bring up the sub mode selection screen. The difference between the two is that CCIP uses your HUD as sort of a sight telling you where the bomb will hit if you release it at that time, while CCRP tells you where you need to be to hit a pre-selected target point coming from a targeting pod, steer point, mark point or any other means of target designation. CCIP tends to be more accurate so it can be used against smaller targets while forcing you to drop altitude and thus giving your enemies an opportunity to shoot you and also opening the option of your own bombs damaging you if you dive too low. On the other hand, CCRP is in many ways the opposite. It's less accurate, so mostly used against larger targets, and it lets you stay at a high altitude, which will make it harder on your enemies to shoot at you and pretty much takes out the option of you damaging yourself. Because CCRP is the preferred method to drop guided bombs, such as laser-guided ones and JDAMs, I'll keep that for those videos, while focusing today simply on CCIP. Moving on, we have the INV, Inventory button, which allows us to see what is mounted on each station of the jet. As you can see, we have four stations with three Mark 82 bombs on the inner wing stations and a fuel tank in the center. Pressing on INV again will bring us back to the SMS page. Now take a look at the right top button. You can see it lists 12 M82, which means we have 12 Mark 82 bombs with RDY ready next to them meaning they're ready to be dropped. Next, we have the Prof Profile Selection button. This button scrolls between Profile 1 and 2, which allows us to save two completely different sets of release settings and switch between them quickly. As you can see, Profile 2 was set by default to CCRP. I'll switch that to CCIP, then switch from single to pair, add a distance of 300 feet, and set the ripple to 3. And now, when I switch between the two profiles, you can see I have two completely different sets of settings I can switch between quickly. This is extremely useful if you set it up before getting into a combat area that you know you'll need it inside of, so you only need to press one button while in combat. Let's talk about the next setting, the single and pair selection. This one is very straightforward. In single, every present weapon release button or after every ripple cycle, the jet will drop a single bomb, while in pair, it will drop two every press or ripple cycle. The weapon release button is this big red button on the stick, so let's set it up on your physical stick. Press escape, then go to adjust controls. In this menu, select search from the drop down, then search for WPNREL. You would want to preferably bind this to the equivalent of the red button I showed you but on your stick. You can see that it's already bound for me, but to bind it, double click on the box corresponding to your stick, and then press the button on your stick. Make sure it's registered the pressed and press OK. Once that's done, double check that it's saved and press OK again. The last two settings are for ripple attacks, which I'll cover in the video on high drag unguided bombs, but I will use the single and pair setting in this video. And that's it for the SMS page. Let's move on to the bombing. One more thing though, you need to understand the HUD symbology. This is the peeper. It tells you where the bomb will hit. In this line, you can think of it as a ranging indicator. Once it passes below the peeper, you're in range. Press the weapon release and the bomb will hit where the peeper is. Looking in front of my nose, I can see the target area. It's this airfield with two runways down there. On each runway, I've placed many many big red fire trucks as practice targets. I do not want to fly straight onto the target. Today's target won't shoot back, but if they did, coming at an angle makes it a lot harder for them. So, it's a good habit to build right from the beginning to not fly directly into a target area.
Now this looks a lot better. All I have to do now is wait until I'm in a good position to start the dive. In a moment, you'll see that in this example, I flew a little too far from the target, which made my dive a bit shallow. You'll see that it will only be between 15 and 20 degrees nose down, while you want to go for 25 to 35 degrees nose down. Steeper dives usually result in more accurate bombing, but you must make sure not to get too low for three major reasons. You don't want to make it too easy for your enemies to shoot at you, you want to make sure you don't crash into the ground, and you do not want your own bomb's explosions to damage your jet. Generally, 5000 feet is the lowest you want to get. To go into a dive correctly, I'll go upside down, pull back on my stick lightly, and once I got a good dive going, I'll start aiming myself towards the point on which I want to drop the bombs. It's also important to keep your speed between 350 to 400 knots or above while not getting to more than 550, which is fast enough to defend yourself but not too fast. I'll now make my ranging line go below the peeper by aiming my nose downwards as needed and getting slightly closer. Once the line is below the peeper and the peeper is on my target, I'll press and hold the weapon release button for a full second to ensure the bomb disconnected. Do not just press and immediately release the button. If you feel comfortable enough with flying the jet, feel free to roll onto the side and watch your hit. Make sure you are in dropping altitude while doing so. I'll now climb back to 15,000 feet and fly to around 10 miles away from the target to comfortably go for another run. Once again, I'm not flying directly into the target area, but I am making sure to improve on the last time when I was slightly too far. Now, it's looking quite a bit better. Once again, I'll go upside down, pull slightly on my stick, and then start aiming myself towards where I want to drop the bomb. I'll make sure the line drops below the peeper, aim at the point, and release the bombs. Then, make my climb out of the target area, and look at those hits. I almost forgot to mention, the radio code for dropping unguided bombs is Pickle, and the radio code for ground unit kills is Shack. So of course, we had some Shacks there. I'll now switch to pairs for the next drop. Once again, I'm just below 10 miles out at around 15,000 feet, going above 350 knots and not flying directly onto the target. And now with two bombs coming off my jet with each press on the weapon release button, I'm gonna go upside down, hold it slightly on the stick, aim myself onto the target, make sure the line is below the paper, put the paper on the target, and drop. Watch those hits. Now, you can see that I slightly missed. The reason for that is that I wasn't perfectly level. When dropping unguided bombs, each small movement can change the entire trajectory of the bomb. So, even more than usual, you want to fly as gentle and precise as you can. Now, with three bombs left on my jet, I'm gonna go for the last run, dropping a parrot first, and then dropping a single, because that's the only thing that's gonna be left on the jet. 
Once again, upside down, pulling slightly on the stick. Aiming myself in the target. Dropping that line below the peeper. Pointing the peeper at the target. Dropping the bombs. Climbing out Altitude. of the dive. Altitude. Watching those hits. Shack. Alright guys, so that is it for the first video in the F-16 Weapons Masterclass. I really hope you find it useful and that you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Have fun dropping those pickles and getting some shacks. See you next time.